The Russian army's successful advance in the special military operation zone continues to gain momentum. War correspondents from both sides admit that the Russian army's successful advance is being recorded in all directions of the front, including the Kursk region. Simultaneously with this, the Russian armed forces continue to launch massive missile strikes against military installations throughout Ukraine almost every day. By the way, today was also no exception. On the night of October 16, Russian missiles and guided aerial bombs hit and destroyed dozens of military targets in such Ukrainian regions as Odessa Kharkiv and Kiev. At the same time, it is worth noting that two days ago, during another massive missile attack on Ukraine, Russian ballistic missiles once again hit enemy military airbases in the Nikolaev and Khmelnytsky regions of Ukraine. Surprisingly, two days after these Russian missile strikes on the territory of Ukraine, Western military departments began to redeclare strange accidents that allegedly killed experienced soldiers and officers of the armies of NATO member states. However, before moving on to the main topic of this video, I would like to give you some important news from the Kursk direction of the front. So, a few hours ago, war correspondents reported that Russian troops managed to liberate another strategically important settlement in the Sudzansky district of the Kursk region. In particular, we are talking about the settlement of Viktorovka. Moreover, the liberation of this village allowed the Russian army to narrow the so-called bottleneck. As a result, the Ukrainian army grouping found itself in a very difficult position in this direction of the front. The fact is that Russian troops continue to squeeze this bottleneck from the west and northeast, gradually encircling the Ukrainian army grouping. In addition, a few hours ago, war correspondents began to receive information that Russian troops also managed to enter such settlements as Leonidovo and Alexandria. Thus, before our eyes, the Ukrainian army units again found themselves in the so-called cauldron. According to war correspondents, the Ukrainian High Military Command is making every effort to relieve the Ukrainian army grouping in order to prevent a final collapse, otherwise, it may lead to the complete encirclement of the Ukrainian army units in the Sudzansky district of the Kursk region. Commenting on the situation in the Kursk region, the commander of Spetsnaz Akhmet, General Apti Alodinov, said that such cauldrons where the Ukrainian army units found themselves are recorded both in the Sudzansky and Koronevsky districts of the Kursk Oblast. According to him, the situation in the Korsk region reached a turning point. As a result, the Ukrainian army began to lose its position rapidly in this Russian region. At the same time, General Apti Yelodinov admitted that the Ukrainian High Military Command continues to try to change the situation on the battlefield and does not consider that the battle in Koronevsky and Sudzansky districts of the Kursk region is finally lost. Against this backdrop, on October 16, at 3 p.m. Moscow time, Ukrainian troops, with the help of infantry forces and the fire support of five tanks, tried to recapture the settlement of Zeleny Shlyak in order to relieve the Ukrainian army units that had fallen into a cauldron. However, unfortunately for the Ukrainian High Military Command, this attempt was unsuccessful. Suffering heavy losses in manpower and equipment, the Ukrainian troops had to retreat again. Over the past 24 hours, the situation of the Ukrainian army has also rapidly deteriorated in the Kupiansk direction of the front. A few hours ago, the head of the military administration of the Kharkiv region, Oleg Senegubov, said that a forced evacuation of residents in the city's archival documentation had been announced in Kupiansk. The Ukrainian authorities made this decision amid a sharp activation of the Russian army in this direction of the front.
It is reported that over the past 24 hours, Russian troops have significantly improved their positions to the northeast, east, and southeast of Kupiansk. In particular, war correspondents confirmed the significant advance of Russian troops in the steppe of Novoselovka area. Against this backdrop, many experts and analysts express confidence that the Russian army can launch an offensive on Kupiansk in the first days of November. Returning to the main topic of this video, it is worth noting that over the past 48 hours, the Russian armed forces have launched quite effective missile strikes on the territory of Ukraine. In particular, independent monitoring services recorded about 12 explosions in the Odessa, Kharkiv, and Kiev regions last night. So, in the Odessa region, in the port part of the city of Odessa, Russian ballistic missiles together with kamikaze drones struck and destroyed several military cargoes. It is reported that these were mostly British maritime drones. In the Kharkiv region, in the village of Glushkovka, the Russian military destroyed a place of temporary deployment of personnel of the Ukrainian army and foreign mercenaries. In the Kiev region, in the settlement of Bila Tsirkva, Russian missiles hit and destroyed three hangars with weapons, as well as two radars for Western air defense systems. It is also worth noting the missile attack on military airbases in Nikolaev and Khmelnytsky regions, which took place two days ago. For example, independent monitoring services recorded three powerful explosions at the Starokosti Antonov Air Base, which was partially re-equipped to receive American F-16 fighter jets. Interestingly, two days after this missile attack, American journalists said that carrier-based electronic warfare aircraft EA-18G crashed in Washington state. At the same time, journalists admitted that the bodies of the two U.S. Air Force pilots allegedly still cannot be found. At the moment, these U.S. Air Force pilots were declared missing. Against this backdrop, many independent experts expressed confidence that the Pentagon had come up with a new fairy tale to hide from the public the death of U.S. Air Force pilots on the territory of Ukraine. By the way, recently, the number of accidents in the West has increased dramatically, as a result of which active duty soldiers and officers of armies of NATO countries have allegedly died. Surprisingly, by a strange coincidence, these accidents in Western countries occur a few days after the massive Russian missile attacks on Ukraine.